I'm Mark Hall with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. And with me is my friend John Fulton. We were talking about old days when I was young, riding the back of a four-row planter and pulling it up with a rope, the row markers. Boy, this piece of equipment, John, has changed more than any piece of farm equipment I can think of. Planning is so important, and we've been talking about planning. If, if, if you just tuned in, go back and watch the first part of our precision planning demonstration, but planning is so important. Help us, John. Well, we talk about, you know, you got that seed, and if you don't get it placed right or give it, to, uh, you know, put it in the ground at the proper time, you're losing yield right away, right? And, yes. uh, and so when at planting, we want to give that seed maximum yield potential when it's placed. So uh, some of these technologies, which we've already reviewed, will help ensure that, uh, improve that. And so, but uh, the other part of this is, is once you've got a lot of this technology, the normal uh, aspect that growers want to do or farmers is, uh, what about variable seeding? You know, I've kind of got, you know, yeah. I've, I've seen some gains with my section control. I've, I've got some savings that's been, and I know my, my fields are variable, but how do I, what do I do? And so we just wanted to kind of cover some of the, the, the prescriptive seeding where we're starting to use data to define zones and determine how much and things, but kind of just go through a few scenarios that are becoming very popular here. So variable seeding, you know, um, that's been going on uh, for probably uh, several years, uh, but it's become more mainstream. Uh, Mark, I can't tell you someone, a, a retailer or a co-op or uh, kind of a precision ag uh, provider, agronomist providing service that d can't write prescriptive seeding uh, racks for people. And so it's become a little bit more mainstream, uh, but at the same time, in order to do that, you got to have the right technology in place. And so I think that's kind of what we just wanted to cover is, you know, to, to, to do this, you want to, there's some basics that I think that, uh, that you got to kind of follow is number one, you got to have the right technology. And so I got to have either a hydraulic drive or the ability to change rates. Uh, and then the other piece of information that becomes very critical is you got to have some data. We talk a lot about yield data, right? Mm -hmm. and, and having that, but on a field by field basis, we need the data layers in order to begin to explore how do I set up my zones? Because that uh, RX or prescription in the top right is what we're trying to trying to find. And so, uh, we'll comment on that in a second. Beyond those those keys, uh, you know, I need that that display, and I think that becomes very critical because we want to do everything as right as possible to ensure success. Uh, but you're going to have to have whether that's internal to the farm or the agronomy. But people have to. We're at a point where computers just can't. We don't have the analytical capabilities today, but ag agronomic expertise, what makes sense, and so there has to be that that piece, and then. Typically, you're going to have to get your seed salesman involved and, and have them give some recommendations on varieties, hybrids, rates, things like that. I mean, uh, your extension people that have been around this. And then uh, you got to have, at the end of the day, you got to have someone or yourself have some data management experience. How are you going to generate these recs? So, There's so many variables, so much data. Wow. When we started this, John, Back in the day, I thought it was field by field, that this is a good field and that field's not so good. But with infield variability, right. it's unbelievable. And that's where we're, I think we're, we're slowly heading. And that's a real key. You brought out a key. We still got to manage on a field by field basis, but now we're trying to, to, to evaluate and investigate how do we do subfield management that can uh, improve our profit and, and reduce our risks, yes. right? Reduce our risk. And another key piece is that if you're going to do any of this is you got to have some kind of evaluation plan. Put some strips out there to check that you actually have a response because, you know, if you don't, how do you define success and how do you learn and, and advance your program? So variable seeding, uh, I would tell most people, I think we found about a five to ten bushel uh, potential in most fields in variable seeding of corn. Uh, but I think you've got to really explore and, and make sure you get your data in place and, and evaluate and learn and expect that you're going to make changes either the way the zones are made or how you're trying to establish rates within zones. So that's, uh, that's kind of what we're after. That's just a, a general prescription map, Mark, as an illustration. 
uh, it's been generated. I, I, you export that out and, and either put it on the card or you l use the wireless or the telemetry today and, and it just pushes it up to a cloud and down to the tractor. When in, and so when I arrive at the field, that prescription comes up and you can see their uh, green, yellow, red is three different rates and you let the, let the uh, planner execute on that. And we talk a lot about field execution. That's where the technology becomes, I mean, I want, if that's my plan, I wanted to uh, accurately uh, fulfill that plan. So uh, you got to have the technology, make sure it's, it's properly uh, calibrated and running and, and operating and to, to execute on that. And so, so the new technology, and so that was kind of verberate seeding. Um, you know, that's kind of an advanced piece, having the data. Uh, and like I said, I, you know, some of our studies would suggest five to 10 bushel gain. Uh, for growers that, that uh, are ready and prepared and have the right advice. But the new thing, Mark, that people are getting really excited about that just kind of come out is multi-hybrid planting. And so this is, I can now go out with uh, a couple companies providing this technology and I put in, a, in, a, in one bin variety A and the other bin variety B. Now I got this prescription that says where I want A versus B and gives us an opportunity to place hybrids out there if we have a little bit of knowledge of what we're trying to accomplish there. I don't believe that, John. <laughs> You're exaggerating. I know. Uh, it's uh, exaggeration or not. Uh, this is an example of uh, Kinsey working with uh, Bex Hybrids. Uh, give these, and with Raven, really the credit of uh, doing about a three-year program to bring, bring this to light. So now Kinsey has this multi hybrid planner as illustrated here, uh, and precision planning, you can go to them and they've got options to uh, multi-hybrid multi meters, which we'll show in the next slide, but uh, this is real. Um, there's a cost to this. I think we're at a early stages of understanding value, but uh, some of the, the preliminary uh, results would suggest, you know, there's, there's some potential yield and profit bumps, so. Um, and the other thing I would add on to, you know, in, the, in our world of agriculture, things like biologicals and seed coatings, and that's not a cheap proposition yes. either. And it might not be a variety change I'm making, but it might be the investment that I've, I've put into the seed where that I'm trying to yes. better manage. The same variety, but with different seed treatments and that's different right. prescriptions. That's right. Wow. And so I think, you know, when I think about uh, the treatments uh, and the common uh, the investment growers are making on those as, as you move around regions and, and the necessity to have those to, to get uh, good quality emergence and, and ultimately yield. Uh, but biologicals becoming more of a, a mainstream and available, uh, again, not a cheap thing. I think there's going to be some opportunities to, to manage that and manage the risks. Well, that's so. news to me, John. That's, that's big. Yeah, and so just an example here, um, the prior, we showed Kinsey's planter, but if you get down to it, rather than one meter, you got two meters on each row. Okay, and, and, and so this works well. If you look on the, on the picture on the right there, you basically see a central fill and you, you label one as A or blue in this case, another one B or in, in orange, and uh, those, you, you essentially have two tubes running out there. Uh, each meter, there's a, each row has uh, electric motors, so you turn one motor off and the other one on, and it switch be, switches between A and B. And uh, you know, we're I think uh, we're excited about this. Again, I think as as you as you get these new technologies, all of a sudden you get your your mind wondering, man, what can we do with that? All of a sudden, things that we used to just dream about, Mark. I mean, I can go out and actually test it, or I can you know, do things that I just had only thought about in the past. And this would be prescriptive. You wouldn't be making changes as you go through the field. It would be the computer and the tractor yeah. would be deciding based on your prescription. That's right, which A or B. And the other thing I would bring up here is there's two prescriptions now. I've got my seeding prescription because I'm gonna, you know, not, if I'm doing this, this variety change, I might want variety A at a certain optimum population and variety B. Um, and so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to have my uh, population prescription, but then I'm gonna have to have my variety or hybrid prescription. So there's actually two prescriptions now, and yeah, the complexity, mm. but uh, the opportunity. Yes. The opportunity. 
So that doesn't mean I can't just go back to a flat rate and a flat hybrid. That doesn't, you can still do that with this technology, but the opportunity, to, you can change both and, and, and do some things. This is an example, Mark. We work hard at Ohio State of developing our management zones. This is our mascot, Brutus. And that's what, uh, this is what multi-hybrid planning can provide. And this is just a demonstration I thought we'd show, show everyone. But uh, this is two different corn hybrids in this case. Uh, that are planted and, and we do this uh, intentionally. So we do um, some different colored tassels and we do some different uh, uh, maturity dates to help really bring what we're trying to show out. But uh, just look at the, the crispness of the, of the lines and the ability of that planter to go out there and do what, what's prescribed. So, uh, but a lot of people are excited about this technology. Oh, it's unbelievable, John. It's You've talked about things in this video that I've never heard before. And it's it's just changing so quickly. Changing quickly. And, and again, I think there's a lot to explore on the grower. There's a lot going on in terms of investment and, and how to manage the, that farm. But uh, again, all of a sudden this technology and who knows, you know, we talk, it's not cheap. You know, it's it's 20% typically compared to an equivalent planter without it. Um, but, uh, you know, if I'm making myself another, you know, 10 bushel, seven bushel, five bushel, potentially, you know, that begins to add up pretty quick, Mark. So Mark, we've talked about technology. We talked about vertebrate seeding. We talked about the ability to do hybrid placement today. And then kind of the final component that we talk about here is, is kind of this data piece. And uh, uh, a lot of growers have adopted this. It's tremendous. We've already talked about these in-cab displays, but the, just the ability to, to, in detail, to understand what that planter is doing. This is just a, some illustrations that what a, an operator in a cab can see. You can see an iPad sitting there. And uh, even if I'm a, a farmer and having someone plan, I can have that iPad as well. As long as I'm connected to the internet, I can, I can watch that operation from my iPad sitting, you know, in a meeting, having lunch or whatever. And uh, just look at the... the sitting in an apartment meeting in Ohio State, you're looking <laughs> at this. Yep. Yep. During planning, it's, it's amazing what you, what you queue up just to, just to see what's going on and, and make sure things are going all right. You know, we, uh, we already mentioned the investment in planters today and a planter tractor combination is not a small feat. And we want to make sure that uh, when the window's right, Let's make sure that keeps going and we're doing the best job that we can of placing seed out there. But you just look at the information uh, here. It gives you the population, singulation, downforce. Um, and there's just a variety of that. And it shows you on a row by row basis there. And, and the nice thing is, is not only do you see that in real time or why that, that operator can see it in real time is, but that's all collected as well. So maybe I didn't see what was happening yesterday. I can pull that up through an app and, and look at it as well and so and I can keep it for the postseason and I just want to kind of we're just kind of throwing in a couple of things we call this as planted data right out of the cab and then again this is something after the fact we had planted this field uh, and if you notice we planted kind of from left to right as it looks on that screen uh, but if you notice at a diagonal where some of those arrows are you, you kind of pick yeah. out and in this particular map what it's looking at is the ride quality of each row unit and what that means is there's an accelerometer on that row unit. And so if that row unit gets real bouncy, think about that in that red or yellow range. If it's smooth, it's green. And so okay. that row unit um, is going across, that, across the field. And so any times there's clods or you get to a, a, a scenario where uh, maybe not be smooth, that, that mm -hmm. row unit's gonna be bouncing a lot more. And so in this case, the red would mean it's really bouncing. The green means it's just, it's kind of floating or being real smooth. But you notice those, uh, those red and yellow kind of lines are diagonal to the way we planted. It just shows you the information and what that actually is from. If I blow that up, if I blow that up, you see those diagonals. And what that was, was, was actually, that's compaction. Mm. Uh, the field cultivator came to the field prior to the planter, a little marginal on moisture. Uh, let's go ahead, we need to go. And what you're actually seeing is the, the, uh, an articulated tractor pulling a 40-foot cultivator, but you're seeing the wheel marks left because it was a little bit wet. You trace that through, 
the season and, and, and why sometimes it's hard to see that, but I can go out right to those points and I could actually see where what we did prior to planning actually influenced what happened at planning in a, in a this data picks it up. Your eyes get to going, well, why is that out there? And you just go out there and you kind of, like you said, you kind of play this back. But this is kind of information that, you know, there's things that expo gets exposed. And so, you know, next year, maybe I don't need to be out there quite that. Maybe in the, maybe we'll wait till afternoon. Uh, and so these are, you know, again, some data. This is a downforce map. We talked about the active yes. downforce. And so why it's, it's pressing on the road unit, it actually gives us how much it's pressing down. And so you can think about the red areas in this where it's really pressing down on the row unit and in the green and blue areas, uh, very little. And you can kind of see on the legend there, it's uh, a little over 400 pounds being pressed down. The reality is, is when you went out there to the field, what those red areas are telling you is, is actually compacted soil. Mm -hmm. It's compacted. And again, I, you, you may know about this, but this is a, an observable way of, of kind of identifying those areas going out and, and kind of ground truth in it. And sure enough, we had some, this in, in this particular field, it's actually highlighting some of the soil compaction that's, that exists out there that needs to, that needs to be uh, dealt with. And so again, this is a planner giving you this information, Mark. This isn't, you know, uh, remote sensing. It's just, hey, it's there. I'm just saying that there's an opportunity to look at it sometimes and pick out some things that uh, you might learn how to, to, to make changes in the operation and such. So this is as applied as planted data as we call, talk about it. The other thing that's new that all the uh, companies are providing today is what we call machine data. Uh, again, I can capture this. And so very similar to the as planted data, this is, uh, this is actually, well, what's the tractor doing? That was what all what the planner mm -hmm. was doing. And again, this is all through an app. I get this, uh, it's got spatial, it's got GPS. And if you notice, down there on the left, at this point, he's, he's coming to the end to turn around. He's doing 4.1 miles an hour mark, burning 6.9 gallons per hour of diesel fuel, engine RPMs right at a little under 1800 RPM and doing about a 55% torque load on that engine. And so again, data, information, uh, maybe I get a better handle on what my variable costs are just by having this. Uh, I would contend that you know, as we collect this over time, there's things that this is going to expose to help uh, not only give you a tangible uh, variable costs on a field by field basis, but spatially it's probably going to expose some things maybe to help improve uh, the operation as well. And so just want to kind of point that out. So you got all these data, you got this technology today. Um, it's a lot to keep, keep track of, but as you said, the important thing is that uh, the investment of planning is, is critical. Doing the best we can is, is more important than ever. A lot of us would probably argue that planning is the most important operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only is the technology, but all of a sudden this as planted data can really verify what went on, as we've talked about. I can kind of go back and kind of replay when we see things. And I've got to collect it today. I've actually got something measurable that uh, I can use. and so. Um, you know, that's kind of the, the full suite of what's where we are today with uh, planning tech and kind of this precision seeding, prescriptive seeding type scenario that's, that's playing out here uh, in agriculture. Thank you so much, John. It's unbelievable the changes that have happened. And just in filming this video, I've learned quite a few things I didn't know. You know, after spending 40 years working with agriculture, <laughs> I didn't know this stuff. And it's, it's changing so quickly. I really appreciate you helping us out. And please watch our other Precision Ag videos. John, you're, you're as smart as anybody I know on Precision Ag stuff. You're pretty dumb on some other things. But Precision <laughs> Ag, you're terrific. And we've got, uh, we've got quite a few videos with John talking about Precision Ag, so, so please watch them. Thank you.